Bantamweight bout here. Zara Farron coming in at plus 300 against Jacqueline uh, Cavalcanti. I believe that's how you say it. Uh, minus 400 for her uh, in her debut. So big favorite in her debut. Over under two and a half rounds. Minus 115 for the over and for the under. Zara Farron, six and five in her professional career. Uh, she was supposed to fight on the Paris card last year. Couldn't get it done. She's getting it done here. She's obviously from France. You see the flag there. Uh, two and three in her last five. She's 0-3 in the UFC. For Cavalcante, fighting out of Portugal, making her debut 5-1 and one for her. Zara Fan, her last time out was at the beginning of the year, UFC 283. She fought Josiane Nunes uh, at featherweight. This one's going to be at bantamweight. She's had a lot of problems making uh, bantamweight before. She has literally never made bantamweight in the UFC. So will she make weight? We will see. You got to cross your fingers because uh, it's been a real struggle for her. She's missed weight numerous times. And uh, her last time against Josiana Nunes, who's like just super short for a featherweight. Big overhand left. She was a big favorite going up against Zara Farron. Zara Farron was able to make it to a decision with her and made it a close fight. Like Josiana Nunes got into a dogfight with Zara Farron. So that's uh, encouraging for, for Zara Farron there. But Jacqueline Cavalcante only losses to Martina Gendrova. That was on the PFL Challenger Series uh, at the beginning of 2022. Since then, she's gotten wins in uh, UAE Warriors against Yulia Kuts- Kutsenko, who uh, actually has a loss to Liang Na. So put that into account. I guess <laughs> uh, she's and then got a win against Nadia. Not even try to say that and a win in the LFA. So if you watch that LFA fight, it was a five round fight against Melissa Croden at uh, bantamweight. And Melissa Croden's a pretty big girl. She's five foot 10. Cavalcante beat her for five rounds and nearly finished her in the first round. She's five foot nine. So she's got a good frame on her. This is a, I mean, Kind of a greasy women's bantamweight fight. So probably can't go wrong just taking a fly around the dog here, especially, Mm -hmm. you know, in France. She's from France against the debuter. But Cavalcante looks like the better fighter to me at this point. Minus 400, don't think I'll take it. But what do you think? Yeah, I feel the same way. And, like, for Farn, you you mentioned the weight cut issues and doesn't really make the weight. It's like you feel like that comes back and bites her because she does look good early in fights. And you know her last fight against Josiana Nunez, she was cracking Josiani in the first round. I don't think anybody expected that. A lot of people had Josiani first round KO, and Farn came out and looked like, okay, this is going to be a long night for Josiani Nunez, and then she just kind of slows down. And I think that has to do with. Um, you know, weight, trying to cut all that weight, doesn't have the durability and cardio that maybe she could. But, you know, you look at her her size. She is big for the division. Cavalcante, I feel like, is going to be pretty damn big for this division too. We're talking about two good kickboxers here. Fyron has fought decent fighters in her last, you know, three UFC fights, which she's taken a loss in each of them. But nonetheless, they have been good fighters. Um, you know, she is powerful too. I, I do like this matchup. Like normally you wouldn't, pay much attention to women's MMA at this level, but I think you could see something decent in the kickboxing versus kickboxer here. Um, so yeah, we'll see what happens. I think Farron can't tire out here. I think Cavalcante will be um, a little bit better better cardio-wise, but the one knock I have on Cavalcante is the level of competition is not the best. You look at a lot of the girls she's beating, some are 0 others, you know, pretty brand new to MMA, and the loss she has, the John DeRova, in the PFL, um, John it doesn't really age that well because if you look at John DeRova, she's kind of getting smacked around in the PFL now anyways. So um, makes me a little nervous. Makes me wonder how good she really is. But at the same time, it's not like you're fighting the best in the division making your debut. I think it could be a little closer than people think. I think plus 300 on a women's dog who is a good striker and powerful is never a bad idea because weird shit happens all the time. A lot of the odds makers get these lines wrong on women's MMA, especially at this level. So for the pick, Cavalcante should win. Betting wise, probably not a bad idea to lay a little something on on Zara Farn here. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the last fight for Farn, like she was a plus four hundred underdog somewhere around there against Josiane Nunes, who had Farn had like a six inch reach advantage, six inch height advantage. Like looking back on that, that was such a risky play to take Josiane <laughs> Nunes at like minus five hundred. 
Uh, and it she made it look like a pick em, basically. I mean, it was a really close fight. She outstruck her, I believe, in by the numbers uh, in every single round. And the third round was tied. But the more significant strikes were for Josiane Nunes. That's why she won. Um, coming in here, I just don't really think it's worth the price for Cavalcante. Yeah. Um, I mean, the only reason Zara Farron is still on the UFC roster is because she's from France and they want her for this card. Like she's 0 3. So this is her last hurrah. Can she get it done? We will see. I'm going to take Cavalcante for the pick because I just think she's better, but I don't know what she's really going to look like in her debut. So, uh, yeah, minus 400, not really what you should be getting, getting invested in this one. 